Hi folks, so in this video I just wanted to share with you a bit of a dichotomy that I have every time I plan for a, um, a hike. So that's what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just trying to get my gear together and work out what I'm taking. But uh, I'm a hammock camper, I like to camp in a hammock because of the comfort and a whole range of other factors. It gets me up off the ground, away from the insects, all sorts of different things. But you can't always take a hammock. Sometimes there are places where you have fixed campsites where you have to camp at a particular spot and maybe that spot doesn't have trees or any other structure that you can hang from. Uh, perhaps you might be in an area which is in high altitude and there might not be uh, many trees around or any trees around. So it's always a, a conundrum. Do I take the hammock or do I take a tent or do I try and do something that's going to work for both? So I've tried to illustrate that here with the layout of my gear. So starting with stuff that I'm definitely going to take, working through, and then I go down two different pathways. The hammock path and the tent path. And I'm just going to talk through the gear that I've got here what I'm planning on taking, and then maybe concentrate a little bit more on the choice between either a hammock or a tent. Okay, so let's go through my basic gear very quickly. So, obviously I've got some shoes. Those are Ultra Lone Peaks, but I also wear the Ultra Superiors. I've worn Superiors a lot more than I have the Lone Peaks. That's, those are all new. Um, I've got my leggings or um, compression pants. Uh, I've got my socks, which are in Jin and G socks. Uh, I've got some uh, running shorts. The shirt I've got there is uh, a full-length merino wool shirt, so that's one I'm trying out. I might do a separate video on uh, on that sort of base layer thing. I've got my hat, which is just a um, adapter cap, some sunnies, my watch, which I always carry, and my trekking poles. Now sometimes I'll chuck in a few extra items, so uh, if I think they're necessary, I've got some gaiters, those are Dirty Girl gaiters, um, but I can, I've got other lightweight gaiters that are more waterproof. I've got some sun gloves, which I might possibly take, although what I'm trying to do with this shirt is to have some hand protection, so I don't really need the gloves uh, so much, and that, but that's in really exposed areas, I might take some sun gloves. If it's cold and exposed, I might take some woolen gloves. And finally, I've got a buff, which I may or may not take. Since I'm using the adapter cap, my neck's covered, and I can kind of use that for wiping off sweat and all that sort of thing, so I'm kind of moving away from the buff, but uh, I'll mention it anyway. Now, this is my pack, and uh, the items that are attached to the outside of my pack. So again, I'll go through this very quickly, and uh, I'll probably do other videos on specific things. My pack is a Mount Laurel Designs Burn. This is the waterproof uh, or DCF version. I've also got the other one, which I've had for years. Now, I've, in my back pocket, I've got a garbage bag, which is uh, odor-proof. I've got a little hand towel, which I actually use if I've got a tent for drying the inside of the tent and uh, things like that. Down the side here, I've got my toiletries. So this is just a cloth, which I use for personal hygiene, hands and things like that. Uh, that's not actually toiletries, those are my, my pegs. I'll, depending on what sort of shelter I've got, I might have two pegs or I might have six or more. So I've got a bag which I primarily dedicate to uh, toiletries. So this is for washing my hands. Uh, I can also use it with my bidet. I've got some toilet paper and a bidet in there. Waterproof bag with a nice poop on the side. Moving across to the other side, I have a water container and a filter. On the pack itself, I have another water bottle, a smart water bottle this time. I've got a light, which I'll talk about in a separate video. I've got some personal hygiene gear, so some soap, some alcohol hand wash, and some sunscreen. On the other side, I have a waterproof pocket in which I carry my maps. Uh, I've also got a compass here and a Garmin inReach. Now, that's quite a large compass. Um, the reason I'm taking that one is the next trip 
I'll probably have to do a lot of navigation. So uh, a sighting compass might be better, but you know, often I'll carry just a really small compass if I'm just using natural navigation. That's a clip for my camera. So my camera goes on there, okay? That's kind of a non-negotiable. I always take a good quality camera with me because I do a lot of landscape photography. Now on the front of my pack, I have one of these z packs pouches, which sits down around my waist and uh, distribute some of the weight forward. I've got my cook kit in there. Now I'm gonna do a separate video on my cook gear. Um, it's not the lightest option. There are lighter options, obviously, but um, I quite like this. It's very flexible. This is a basic survival kit, which again, I'll probably do a separate video on. So my survival kit is basically everything I carry, but I've got a few items here, which are like a backup to a lot of the other stuff. So backup shelter, there's a knife, there's some backup cordage, all sorts of things like that. But I won't go into it here. A first aid kit, so some people might think that's a bit over the top. I do change that up a little bit. So for example, when hiking in Australia, in the warmer months, I will take one of these smart bandages uh, for snake bite control and for other, other reasons. But again, I'll probably do a separate video on the first aid kit. I've got some earplugs there if it's a bit noisy. So I carry at least a couple of spare camera batteries because my camera goes through the batteries pretty quickly. Charger for all of the electronic devices. Cable with a multiple adapter so I can plug into micro USB as well as USB-C. Spare socks. There's probably other things I've forgotten. For example, the phone that I'm using to record this would go into this waterproof bag as well. And then what I tend to do is I put my snacks in that bag as well. So I've got all of the snacks that I'm gonna have during the day, so it's easy to access. And if there was any large maps or anything that didn't fit into that little pouch, I'd probably put those in, in there as well. Just things that I might need during the day. Okay, so that's the stuff that doesn't really change much. Now we start to get into things which, which do change from trip to trip. Now I've got food here. There's only like an overnight supply there, but you know that could be quite a large, large bag depending on how long I'm out for. So with this particular setup, I usually maybe a week to eight days um, worth of food potentially if I'm doing a, a longish hike or a section of a, of a long hike. I've got some rain pants here. They may not be necessary in warm conditions, but uh, I, I always like to have a spare pair of pants anyway. Keep away the mosquitoes and things like that, and they're super light. Now, this is a puffy jacket. It's a Patagonia micro puff. And in terms of warmth to weight ratio, it's really good. Um, it's a really warm jacket. And this is where things start to get a little bit complicated because there are other options that I've been looking at. In fact, I'm going to do a separate video where I look at several different types of synthetic mid layers and just compare and contrast them. Now, the reason I've put this nano puff in for this particular trip is that I'm probably going to be using my hammock and I may not have an outer layer as I would if I was using a tent. So I might actually be using a poncho instead of a uh, waterproof jacket. If I do that, then I need something that gives me some wind protection if I'm looking for warmth. So that's what this jacket will do. It will actually keep the wind off. Whereas if you look at some of these other jackets, which I might put in on different trips, so this is a um, Kaui Peloton, and here's a um, MacPack Nitro. These are super light, so they're actually lighter than the Nano Puff. Um, but you need something over the top of them for wind protection. If I don't think that the nano puff is going to be enough, I might have a mid layer and take one of these, probably the MacPack Nitro. But if it was warm enough, I would probably just take something like the Peloton um, instead of the uh, instead of the nano puff. Now the final thing I wanted to mention. Again, I wouldn't take this unless it was absolutely necessary, but I've got some socks here, some waterproof socks. So if there was going to be snow, um, I would wear these underneath my, underneath my shoes. I've also got some waterproof gloves. These are just laundry gloves, but they're great for the, for the snow with a bit of thermal insulation underneath them. 
and I've got some long pants here which I might need if it was a cold trip. So the next thing I've got here is my sleeping quilt and um, this is pretty simple. This is a, a minus five quilt from z -Pax. Uh, it works with my hammock or it works with my ground shelter, so I don't need to make any particular decisions here. However, I have recently bought a synthetic quilt which has a different temperature rating, so it's for warmer conditions. It's a similar weight to this, but I'd consider taking that as an alternative if the nighttime temperatures were warm enough and also if I was a little bit concerned about moisture. So if I was concerned about my quilt getting damp over time uh, then I'd probably go for the synthetic quilt if the temperature rating allowed it or alternatively what I could do is I could put that quilt over the top of this one for more extreme conditions. So this would get me down to minus five in theory but um, if it was getting that cold I may well take the second quilt to go over the top of it but again that would change a lot of the other elements of, of the planning. The final thing I'll mention is uh, I generally always wear something to bed, basically to protect my quilt, but also to give me a little bit of warmth and give me a second set of clothes, because normally I would only have one set of clothes, the actual clothes that I hike in. So I carry merino wool, base layer, pants and shirt. And I usually have a pair of warm socks as well. If it was really warm, I wouldn't bother but um, it is nice to have a bit of warmth there because my feet do tend to get cold, particularly in the hammock. Okay, so that's the easy part. Most of that stuff I've shown you so far, I would take on every trip with just a few modifications, as I've mentioned. You know, I might wear a little bit, take a bit more warm gear if it was cold. I might take a little bit less if it was warm conditions and so forth. Just, just logical and the sort of thing most people would, would consider. However, when I start thinking about what type of shelter to use, that's when things become a little bit more complicated. Now let's go down the simple path to start with. Let's say I want to use my tent because there aren't trees or perhaps I don't have the option of choosing my campsite when I go to different places. So I basically just have to cope with whatever comes up. So this is the simplest way to go. What I do is I have my shell jacket so I always take that if I'm camping on the ground because it gives me wind protection, it gives me rain protection and so forth. And uh, really, because my pack is waterproof, I don't really need to worry too much about uh, covering up my, my pack or, or, or anything like that. And this gives me a lot more flexibility as well if I, if I was in, a, in an area where I might have to do some climbing or something like that. Now... If I'm taking my ground shelter, I'm going to use a comfortable sleeping mat, okay, because I have trouble sleeping as it is, so I want something comfortable. And I've got a big Agnes at the moment, and it's got this stuff sack which also helps inflate it. So what I do is I use that as my sleeping bag liner. It's completely waterproof, so everything that goes in there is protected. So I can put my quilt in there, I can put my spare clothes, Anything that I want to keep dry, even though my, my pack should be waterproof, that gives me an extra layer of protection. And also it allows me to fill my sleeping mat up much quicker. There's my tent. It's a Z-Pax Plexamid. It takes one trekking pole and about six or eight pegs to put up. And there's my sleeping mat, as I mentioned, with an inflatable pillow. I find the pillow makes life a lot easier. So that's the simple part. Now, taking the other path, and my preferred path, if I decide to use a hammock, this has a few implications. So I wanna keep the amount of stuff that I'm carrying to a minimum. So what I try to do when I'm hammock camping, unless it's absolutely necessary, I will bring a poncho instead of a rain shell jacket. Now this doesn't give me as much protection on the arms, so if it was particularly cold, I'd probably still have to take the jacket. But in normal circumstances, I can get away with the poncho as, as my rain cover. And the benefit is that it covers my pack, so it gives my pack extra protection. It covers me, and it also covers my camera gear, which is on the front of my pack, although I do have a separate bag to cover the camera. 
So you can see already things are starting to change. And, and, and the reason for choosing this particular option with the hammock is that it gives you not just rain protection during the day, but it also gives you a range of other functions. For example, this poncho is a ground sheet. So if I did have to go to ground, I could use this um, to set up my sleeping gear on. And also it gives me a space below the hammock where I can put stuff and it's not gonna get in the dirt. So it protects my gear. The other thing I can do with this poncho ground sheet is I can wrap it around the outside of my hammock if I'm likely to get rain or wind blowing through underneath my tarp. So it gives me some extra protection. And I'll talk about why that's important in a moment. So if I'm not taking a sleeping mat with an inflation bag, then I need something to keep all my dry stuff dry. So I've got this liner, which is basically like a, a garbage bag. Now, this is where we get into the shelter itself. Now, this particular hammock is a butt in a sling. It's the lightest hammock I've got. It only weighs just over 200 grams with suspension. So the suspension, which is in here, weighs 50 grams. The problem is though, it doesn't have any sort of mosquito netting or anything like that. So what I do is I carry a bug net to go over my head. I did actually make a half bug net to go over this, but it wasn't particularly effective, so I decided against using it. The rest of my body then has to be covered by my quilt to keep the insects off. So that's an important consideration. This is something which I'm very unsure about. I don't really like this style of hammock. My actual preferred style of hammock is something like this, which is a Dutchware chameleon. But you can see the difference already in size. So this actually has a mosquito net on it, so it's basically like a tent. It's very comfortable. You're fully enclosed. All of your gear is kept in, in place quite, quite well. However, it's well over twice the weight. So it's close to 500 grams. So although it's fantastic to use, it's very heavy. So I'm trying to go for the lightest possible by taking a netless hammock. The next compromise is my tarp. This is a diamond tarp made of DCS fabric. It's from Mount Laurel Designs. It's fantastic. It's, it's the best DCF tarp that I've had so far. However, it has fairly minimal coverage. And that's where this ground sheet poncho, which I didn't mention is actually from z -Packs, that's where that comes in. Because due to the minimal coverage that this gives you, I often feel that I need to cover part of the hammock or part of the side or underneath of the hammock with something to protect me from any rain that gets blown in and also for wind protection. So it's very light, so it's one of the lightest options you can get in terms of tarps, but the compromise is that you don't have much protection. The other issue with this is that you don't have much cover if you have to go to ground. So a rectangular tarp or even a hex tarp uh, with, with or without doors would work much better as a ground shelter. You could easily convert that into a bivy type setup or into something which is effectively a tent. But with this, the coverage is very minimal and I've slept on the ground with this over the top of me and I can attest to that. It, it doesn't give you very much cover. So this is something I have to think about quite a lot, whether this combination of this tarp and my ground sheet poncho is gonna give me enough protection. Finally, we have the underquilt. So this is a three quarter length underquilt. Uh, I find this quite warm. The only downside is that it doesn't protect your feet at all. So that's where the, uh, the warm socks come in, having something over your feet. And if they were dry and I had them with me, I'd probably put the waterproof socks over the top as well. And that would give me a bit, ex bit of extra protection. But you can put stuff underneath your feet. Uh, or underneath your legs. So what I tend to do is I tend to sleep with my pack underneath my legs. So that gives me a bit more insulation down that way. And if you have a small pad with you, you could use that as well. But having a three quarter length quilt saves a lot of weight. This is a hammock gear quilt. Final thing I'll mention, as I've said, this is optimized for hammock camping. So it's gonna make it very difficult if you have to go to ground. I do have a ground sheet. So that's one thing, and I can cover myself up to some extent 
but that small diamond tarp is not the best option. But I don't have anything to sleep on. So I'd either have to build up leaves or something else underneath my ground sheet for insulation from the ground, or alternatively, I do have a smaller inflatable mattress. So this is a three quarter length inflatable mattress. It's only narrow, so it's not particularly comfortable if you have to sleep on the ground with it. Uh, and you do have to put something under your legs like your pack. However, um, I do sometimes carry this as it's relatively light. And if I do think there's a chance that I'm going to have to go to ground with my hammock, um, it does give me at least some insulation from the ground. And the final thing I'll mention, if I was particularly paranoid, I might also throw in, since it's very light, a Mylar bivy bag. So I have used that before when I've wanted a vapour barrier, so over, over my body uh, between me and the quilt, so just to prevent any moisture condensing in the quilt. And also you could use it potentially for wind protection as well, so I have done that before on particularly windy nights. I've wrapped that around the outside of myself and my quilt for wind protection. But the basic setup is what I've got there. So this hasn't been a comprehensive video, but uh, it does hopefully give you a bit of an idea of some of the compromises you've got to think of when you choose between hammock and ground camping um, and how complicated it is if you want to be able to go to ground with your hammock setup. And this is something that I'm still struggling with and still working on. I keep trying all sorts of different ideas and I think it's something for a se separate video. So after everything I've said, you might be asking yourself, why not just go with a tent? It sounds so much more complicated trying to use a hammock. What if there are no trees? What if you just have to camp in a particular spot and there's no and there's no way you can put up the hammock? What if you're actually banned from using hammocks, which sometimes happens? Well, I would say that I think it is still worth it trying to hammock camp if possible. And there's a number of reasons for this. The first one obviously is comfort. So I can sleep in this kind of setup, a ground shelter, a tent with a, um, a pad, but I wake up constantly during the night. That's probably one of the most comfortable pads you can get, but it still doesn't work for me particularly well. So I get very poor sleep quality and that's something that I really need when I'm walking, good sleep quality. So I get far better sleep, sleep quality with a hammock. But the other thing is the flexibility. Um, with, with a ground shelter, you need a space where you can actually set up the tent and it needs to be fairly flat. Now this isn't a huge tent, but it still has a reasonable footprint. So that's absolutely necessary and the tent can also be damaged quite easily because you're putting it on the ground. It gets wet, it gets dirty, um, there are insects and all sorts of other things. Obviously you're protected from those but you're still getting in and out of the tent and you know introducing dirt and that that way. With longer hikes in particular what I find is that you don't have those restrictions with a hammock. So you can pretty much stop wherever you want to as long as there's trees. So in something like a through hike, for example, I can keep walking pretty much until it starts to get dark and then I can set up and just go straight to bed or have, have something to eat and go to bed with a hammock. Whereas with a tent, I'm kind of confined to specific campsites or areas that have enough space to set up the tent. So I think that a hammock gives you a lot more flexibility in that sense. And I can camp in places that you would not even think about camping with a ground shelter. So for example, I've camped on the side of hills on steep slopes with water flowing underneath me during heavy, heavy downfalls. So I've been able to get myself up out of the mud so my gear is nice and clean and protected all night. And I'm comfortable, I can sleep just as well as I can in any other circumstance. So I'll do a separate video on, on hammocks versus tents, but uh, Basically, I think it's worth the effort trying to use a, a, a hammock if you can and trying to get them as light as possible. I'll just mention that the two setups I've shown you here using the lightest of my hammocks, uh, not, the, not the other one, the heavier one, but these two setups here, 
for either ground or hammock camping are basically the same weight. The hammock setup is slightly lighter, but it's not a massive difference.